Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, our PPACA Compliance Testing and More, which will be presented by Sterling HSA. Today's webinar will be recorded, and you will receive a copy um, of the recording as well as the presentation slides tomorrow via email. I am Stacy Reeder, the Marketing Director for Bear and Purvis, and I will be joining Perry Perrin, the Vice President of Sales, as she pre presents the ERISA wrap portion of today's webinar and also Tom Zendarski, the regional sales rep for Sterling, as he presents the PPACA compliance testing. And we're very pleased to have both Tom and Perry with us today to cover these topics. And as many of you may already be aware, we partner with Sterling HSA to offer free and discounted services through our Broker Picks program, you know, Sterling's Cobra FSA, and now their PPACA compliance testing is available through our Broker Picks program, which means no cost for your groups, for your employers when they enroll 20 or more with one of our medical carriers. But even if your groups don't qualify for a free service, you can still obtain discounted pricing for these services along with Sterling's ERISA wrap, HRA administration on discrimination testing, etc. And all the information on our Broker Picks program we, we will send to you tomorrow um, in the email when we send you the recording. But it's also available on our website or from you know, any member of your BMP sales team. So the next time that you speak with one of them, feel free to ask them to send you over that information. But before I turn everything over to Perry and Tom, I do want to let you know, I do want to touch on just a, a few housekeeping items, just reminding everyone that you are all on mute. So if you want to ask questions, I just ask that you submit them in writing. And Depending on when the question is submitted, if it seems, you know, at a, the appropriate point of the presentation, you know, I will, you know, ask that of Perry or Tom. But we will also address questions and answers, you know, at the end of the presentation as well. So, and I know I've said this before, but just to let everyone know, the presentation is being recorded. We will send you that as well as a copy tomorrow. So I want to go ahead and get started. And Perry and Tom, thank you again for being here today. And you know, I think we're ready to start with the presentation. OK. Thank you so much, Stacy. I appreciate it. And thank you, uh, all of you on the phone, for joining us today. I may know some of you already, having been in the area for a very long time. So hello to you. And thank you for considering Sterling. I also want to tell you I have uh, Terry Louder our Director of Compliance on the phone with us today in case we have any really detailed questions. Um, I'm going to be taking the ERISA wrap presentation and Tom's going to take the uh, PAPACA compliance services. And so let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to go over with you today um, very briefly is uh, who is Sterling, what is ERISA and who's subject to it, what is the ERISA wrap? Why are we hearing about this now? Um, who should actually have an ERISA wrap document? Um, what benefit plans apply and do not apply? Um, a brief discussion about penalties. And then what is the Sterling ERISA wrap services and the pricing that are available to you and your clients? So just a very short story because this is not all about us. It's really about the ERISA wrap and PAPACA compliance, but Sterling is uh, based in Northern California. We are an independent third-party administrator for HSA, HRA, FSA, COBRA, POP. Uh, we also do 5500 filing services. We do this ERISA wrap that we're talking about today, and we also do healthcare reform compliance services, which Tom's going to be talking about. We are a privately held company, and we are a financially self-sustaining company. We're not owned by a bank, and we're not owned by an insurance company. This is all that we do, and this is what we do, and we're very good at it, um, and we don't have to answer to anybody else, which is, which is nice. We really are a leading service provider with high-touch services that we offer to our brokers and our clients. Since we are headquartered in Northern California, it is beneficial for the brokers that are also in Northern California and the clients because we do extensive education of these products for the members. We do set up for the employers. Uh, we do compliance, and, and Terry has her compliance uh, department uh, headquartered here in Oakland. 
And we also provide account management services. So not only do we have a salesperson um, that you can talk to face-to-face in -to -face Tom Zandarski, we also have account managers that your clients talk to, um, which is, makes us, I think, uh, unusual for um, providers of these type of services. We also really understand what the clients and the members go through, and we try and make it as easy for them as possible. Not being attached to um, a bank or a big insurance company and this being all that we do, it does make it easy for us to change things when necessary because um, we have the control to, to do what we need to do. We do have clients all throughout the United States, and again, we're based in Northern California. So that's just a short blurb about Sterling. Again, uh, we have account-based products, HSA. Um, that is how we uh, got started. That is our um, core product line. Uh, we have also do HRAs, FSAs, and that would include health care, dependent care, transit parking, limited purpose, um, health care spending accounts. Um, we also do POPs, as I said, COBRA administration, 5500, uh, ERISA RAP, which is what today is about, and the compliance services related to Affordable Care Act. So we do all size companies. Again, we started out uh, smaller and moved into to mid and larger cases, and we also do jumbo cases. So I just want you to know that we do all size cases. and have experience uh, in all uh, size of business and all lines. This is just a sample or a partial list of some of our larger clients, many names you would probably recognize. So I just want to give you some comfort as to our expertise. So let's get into the ERISA wrap. So which employers are really subject to this ERISA law? Well, it's really all private sector corporations and partnerships, sole proprietorships, including nonprofit corporations, really must all comply with ERISA. And there's really only two um, entities that are exempt, and those are churches and government employers. They would be the ones exempt from ERISA, and everybody else really must comply. So what is an ERISA wrap? Well, NERVISA RAP is really um, a, a product, a document that's designed to capture all of the company's benefits in one summary plan description. So the easiest way I think to, to think about this is the summary, the ERISA RAP is like a, a book cover or a jacket, and it surrounds all the different chapters in this book, and those chapters are all the different um, summary plan descriptions. You might be, have one for your medical coverage, you might have one for um, your LTD, maybe one for dental and vision if it's separate from your medical carrier. So you can have all these various you know, chapters in there and the ERISA wrap really brings it all together and makes it into one sum summary plan description that you can distribute to your employees and um, have on hand in, in case you get audited and it, and it complies with what you need to do for ERISA RAP. So it is, it is something that is the law and it is necessary and um, just hasn't had a lot of attention in the past to it. Next slide. So why is there attention to it now? Um, it's really mainly due because the enforcement of this law has changed, not necessarily not necessarily the law, the law actually has not changed, but the enforcement of it has. So what's different in the enforcement? Well, first of all, the Department of Labor has been awarded funds to audit companies or your employers. Um, and one of the specific items that they're looking for is are they complying with ERISA? And one of the things they have to comply with is to have this ERISA wrap document. So generally when a company gets documents, they're getting them from their insurance carrier who has to comply with the state laws but not the federal laws, and ERISA is really a federal language. So unless you're, you're wrapping this jacket around all the stuff that you get from the carriers, you're really not in compliance with the, the federal ERISA law. Also health reform has put um, this in the bright lights. Uh, and really, again, it's an overall lack of awareness compliance in the marketplace. 
really because there had not been any enforcement before. So now that there seems to be enforcement, then there needs to be awareness of what needs to be done to comply. And that's really why we have attention on this now. Again, it's because the enforcement's changed, not that the law has changed. And again, ERISA compliance is not an option. It is a law. Next slide. So I also want to go a little deeper into this. So the ERISA Benefit Security Administration is the one that is mainly enforcing ERISA. It is expected that over the next five years that every private sector employer will be touched in some form, uh, some way for an audit. This EBSA in 2013 hired over 1,000 auditors. Uh, the uh, Division of the Wage and Hourly Department brought on just under 2,000 auditors in 2013. And the IRS is also doing ERISA audits. So there's three actual government agencies that are doing these ERISA, audit, ERISA audits. And that is why there's a heightened awareness around them. It is expected that, that actually billions of dollars will be collected in these fines. Um, and that 90 to 95% of employers will have one violation of ERISA compliance. So again, it is something that could touch your employers, and it is important that, uh, that brokers talk to their employers about this and, and have a discussion about you know, what the employer wants to do. Some may want to do nothing. Some may want to you know, do the minimum. Um, but you, as, an, as a broker, do need to really have a discussion with them about ERISA compliance. So, you know, what kind of documents are we talking about that would um, need to be uh, covered under the ERISA wrap? Really, it's quite a few. So if any employer has any of these documents, and this is not a full list, this is a sample, and you can see that it's lots of different things. It's not just your mainstream medical plan, but it's also, you know, the vision plan, any disability plan, um, EAPs, uh, long-term care, your severance plans, lots of different things have to be in this ERISA document, not just, you know, I have a summary plan description for my medical plan. Next slide. So let me just talk a little bit about the audit procedures. Um, and this is as we believe them to be, as we know them from what um, clients have brought forward and the brokers have fought, brought forward to us because it's not anything you can go on on the Department of Labor and they're going to tell you what their entire procedure is. So what happens is a phone call is placed to an employer that they're going to be audited. We don't know exactly which agency is placing this call. It could be any one of the three. Um, and then the call is followed by an email uh, sometime in the next 45 to 60 days. Once the employer receives the email, they have 10 to 15 days to comply. And that means that they need to answer 24 questions uh, to the entity that is contacting them and supply the appropriate documents and documentations. And we have given this list of 24 to uh, Baron Purvis, and they can share that with you. Or if you want to contact Tom, he can get it for you. Um, they ask all number of questions, and I'm going to go into some of those. But really what needs to happen is, you know, when the employee gets this email and they have 10 to 15 days, they need to be what I call audit ready when they get this email. Those 10 to 15 days is not the time really to start and scramble and try and get all of this information completed because it's just too stressful. Um, it is it is really should be done and and kept on file and distributed to the employees so that when they get tapped on the shoulder, all they have to do is give them the information. Uh, after they respond to the government, um, their responses will be reviewed and the documents reviewed. Um, sometimes they will be fine, especially if they've you know gone through our program. Um, but if they're not, or if they don't have an ERISA wrap document, they will be notified in writing what they need to do, and they have seven to 10 days to correct. Again, that's a pretty stressful time period just to try and 
start from scratch to comply. If they don't comply within those seven to ten days, that's when the penalties kick in. And the penalties um, can be all over the board, honestly, um, from as little as thousand dollars for, you know, failing to provide this um, documentation to $100 per employee per day to higher than that, um, depending on, you know, what they have, have and have not done. So they're, they're, they're really all over the board, and you really don't want, you know, your clients to incur any penalties at all. So let's just talk a minute about these 24 things that are going to be asked by the government. Some of, seven of them come with our ERISA RAP um, documentation, uh, the b biggest being this, um, this summary plan description or this jacket that puts them all together. Um, we also have other things in there that uh, might be required. Um, summary plan descriptions, um, we, the name of the broker, interest, interestingly enough, is asked by the, by the um, Department of Labor. Um, certificates of credible coverage, although that will be going away um, shortly. If any of the following notices in number seven are required, we will supply those as well. Um, so we take care of those seven, and then there is uh, the next six that are really produced by your client or the employer, some financial records, minutes of board of director meetings, um, those sort of things that they would have the information on. Uh, and then there are another uh, 11 items that the clients get from the insurance carrier, such as health insurance contracts and policies, samples of enrollment applications. Um, and you can read the list, but you, but your employer needs to, or the, your client, the employer needs to have all of these 24 things at the ready, and we'll help you understand what they all are and what you need to do and who you need to go to to get the information. They're all supposed to be um, kept together on file uh, in a binder and also ele electronically, um, so you can easily provide the information on the audit. Uh, and we also um, counsel you on what you need to give to your employees. We provide the information electronically, by the way. I just want to point that out. It is up to the employer to make copies and put it in a binder, et cetera. So what is it that Sterling then provides in this ERISA wrap service that you would purchase um, from us through Beer and Purpose? Well, first of all, the biggest thing is we provide this wrap document which then becomes the overarching summary plan description. We also do your 5,500 filings, if that applies uh, to the size company that we're dealing with, as well as any um, other schedules that need to be um, filed. Um, we provide a summary of material modification, if that is necessary. Um, we give you guidance on document retention, um, and we help you understand you know, what the employees need to receive and the employees' um, rights and what they need to see, uh, which is which is important. Um, we provide you um, guidance and technical assistance uh, during the year, um, which questions come up. And so we have uh, this department, um, a, a compliance department headed up by Terry that's there for our clients that purchase this service to answer questions or for our brokers that um, have purchased for their clients and want to ask questions. And we provide the notices at the bottom, which I talked about before, um, for the clients. So next slide. So uh, I wanted to note out the pricing um, and fees. And I wanted to also make mention that if you do buy this through Beer and Purvis for the first year, and in the first year, you'll find a setup fee and an annual fee. We do discount that for Beer and Purvis brokers and their clients by 10%. So you'll see that um, if you were coming to us directly, the first year on under 50 would be 775, but through Beer and Purvis, 69750, and on down the the list there. 
uh, in the second year, there is not a discount. So the annual fee that you see of 375 will be the second year um, charge. So you do have the advantage of having a lower price when you come through Beer and Purvis, and that's um, something we've negotiated with them and something that I'm pleased to offer to you through them. I think that Beer and Purvis has also, yes, there it is, um, included uh, some of this information in their broker picks. Uh, the broker picks, as I understand it, is if you enroll 20 or more um, employees in a medical coverage through Beer and Purvis, then they give you uh, the option of picking an additional service in the broker picks, and they've added uh, some of the service, uh, the compliance testing, and I believe COBRA to the broker picks for the first year. And, and um, Stacy, if I said that wrong, um, please clarify for me. Is that no, correct? No, you're correct. Okay. So we're very um, uh, honored to have them do that uh, and offer that to you. So they're paying the freight on on uh, some of the programs, uh, the extra programs, um, if you're placing some mainstream medical business with them of a certain size. Um, and we feel very fortunate that they're offering um, these things to you and very fortunate that they're um, offering our ERISA RAP program to you and making you aware of uh, this program. Um, I think that it's gaining a lot of attention um, from brokers out there. It's it's something that a lot of people are talking about. So I, I think it's important that they are bringing to you information about this ERISA RAP program so that um, you can enlighten your clients and if they want to get um, you know, be in compliance, then you can move forward and, and uh, suggest um, that they do that, and, and this is one way that you can be able to do that. Some brokers are even, at, even giving their clients an email and asking them to sign off on the email that they've been notified, just kind of for your own protection. So I just wanted to throw that out in case somebody wants to, you know, um, just know what another broker might be doing about that. Because um, sometimes it's easy to get to have, oh, I don't know, emails overlooked and, and you wouldn't want somebody to say, oh, geez, I didn't know about this, et cetera. So that's really the, the uh, ERISA wrap in a, in a nutshell. Um, Tom is your salesperson or the person that you, that you would go to, to Bear and Purvis and then they would come to Tom and we would get you what you need. They do have discounted pricing um, on all of our products from Sterling. It's not the same on every product, but they have up-to-date uh, pricing. And we would um, encourage you to try Sterling if you have not. Uh, again, we really, really think that our service is sets us apart from the competition, and we're very proud of that. And I know that you would be pleased with our services. So do we have any questions about the ERISA wrap? Yeah, actually we do, Perry. Thank you. Um, well, in fact, when you were talking about the timelines and as far as the auditing picking up, we, we have a participant on the webinar today who has a client that received a letter at the beginning of this week and has to um, conduct the call with them by the end of this, on Friday of this week. So that's that's kind of short notice. Um, so it's it definitely short, and that's... Go That's ahead. why I say don't wait until you know they get that thing because then it's too stressful for everybody to try and figure it out. Absolutely. Now I do I do have a question about the fees. The fees that you presented and um, do they reflect only the wrap um, the wrap document preparation or are are the fees all inclusive? Meaning you know fifty five hundred the SAR the S the SMMs. Yeah, the fees are all inclusive. Of course, if you're under 100, then there is no 5,500, um, but they are inclusive if you uh, purchase that from us. Again, in the first year, there's the setup and then the annual fee together, and then on the renewal years, there's just the annual fee. Then how often do you need to update the wrap document? Uh, Terry, I'll let you take that one. Sure. If there are no changes to any material changes to what you've put in your wrap document, things like the name, legal name of the company, maybe the plan year start and end dates, things of that nature, 
then you don't really need to make any changes unless those change. Every 10 years, you are required to do an updated summary plan description that's distributed to employees, and that assumes there's been no changes from the beginning. But as you guys all know, companies do have changes. So they may uh, change a contribution strategy, they may change a plan year, uh, those types of things. If there are amendments, or what we call summary material modifications, every five years then there's a re requirement that there be a new summary plan description created and distributed. So we will, as part of our ongoing annual service, we reach out annually to find out if anything has changed, and if so, we'll just update the summary plan description at that time as well. So each year you get a touch point from us to make sure that what you have in your documents is up to date. Plus the ability to ask us questions during the year, mm -hmm. right? Yep, of course. Okay, next question. Well, can you just, I know that you um, addressed this question right at the beginning of the presentation, but can you speak to, you know, the group sizes that, you know, uh, must comply? Yeah, uh, on ERISA wrap, it's all size groups. So two on up to whatever size you are. Um, we do them um, all size cases. The smallest case that we've had, uh, somebody contacted by the Department of Labor was eight employees, and we retur retu uh, routinely do ERISA wraps on large companies as well, uh, 5,500, 2,000, 4,500, and those are coming from brokers that have compliance departments within their own agency, so they are choosing Sterling to provide those services for them, knowing that it's not something that somebody can just kind of trip through and provide themselves. It is pretty technical, and we do have a very strong following and a great reputation in terms of what we provide. So in terms of the size, it's all size cases. So what is the, well, okay, so going back to the ERISA wrap document, does the ERISA wrap document just need to be maintained on file, or is this something that needs to be distributed to all employees? It does need to be distributed to all employees and also maintained on file. And that is uh, how that you do that is one of the things that we go over with you as clients. Uh, and Terry, I don't know if you want to expand more on that. Nope, there's a plan document that the employer maintains, and the summary plan description, or SPD, for the ERISA wrap is what is de delivered to the employees. There's different ways that you can deliver it, either in paper or electronically. And we will guide you um, by asking some questions about do your employees have access to uh, the Internet, and you know if the answer is no, what you have to do. Um, so you can't just give it to everybody electronically if they don't have the ability to access it. So we help you with all understanding all of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, I, this, as you know, and I'm sure you dealt with a lot of clients um, trying, you know, struggling through this at the end of last year. We had a large, um, a, well, a large percentage of employers that chose to early renew in December. So their ERISA plan year may have been January through December, but yet they choose to they chose to early renew in December of last year. How would that affect? They so their policy year changed to twelve one. So then, what would be what requirement would there be with their ERISA document? Would they have to update their ERISA document or issue an amendment, an SMM? I'll take this question. This is Terry. So it's an option. So one of the benefits of having an ERISA wrap in place is that it takes all of your subsidiary contracts, so say your medical plan, your dental plan, your vision, and it in makes them part of one plan and a plan that's determined by the employer. What that means then is if any of those subsidiary contracts then renew on a different cycle than what the ERISA plan is, that is okay. If there are 5,500s that need to be filed, then any plan that ended within that plan year gets filed through one 5,500 rather than separate ones. So a lot of employers do like to have their ERISA wrap plan year coincide with whatever their health plan 
plan year is, they can do that. Uh, or they can choose to leave that ERISA wrap, say, on a calendar year. And then again, it's, it's not a problem. They don't need to amend anything if their medical or any of those subsidiary plans renew on a different cycle. So again, it's employer choice. There's pros and cons to both, and we, we can help talk a client through those. But I also think it's, there is a real value in having, if you have an ERISA wrap, then just filing one 5,500 if you're over 100 lives versus not having it being over 100 lives and having to file a 5,500 for each of your different lines. Correct, Terry? That's correct. Yep. OK, yeah, thank you. Thank now, you. Um, two, I'm going to ask, I have two other questions in regard to ERISA. So yeah. what is the general turnaround time for you know, creating an ERISA wrap document? This is Terry. I'll take that question again. Once we have all uh, the application is completed, there's no blanks missing, and there's no, they've sent it in, and we've also received payment, we can turn those around within 7 to 10 business days. OK, that's a quick time frame. Now, on the, on the ERISA documents, the ERISA wrap documents, will I know that they include the evidence of coverage, the EOCs, but do you also incorporate the SBCs now? So what we will provide is the ERISA RAP document. We then instruct the employer to take all of the materials that they're provided from the different insurance carriers, like that uh, summary of benefits of cover summary of coverage and benefits and then also any of the benefits booklets, anything like that. That's considered, those are the inserts to that ERISA wrap. So while we don't actually bind that information to them for them, we instruct them to provide them in conjunction with those materials. I hope, I hope that answered it clearly. So they become the chapters in the book. OK. All right. Well, thank you. Now, and Terry, I just I want to ask you this question since you're on the call. It, it doesn't apply directly to ERISA, but um, well, to the ERISA wrap. But on cert the certificates of credible coverage, do you foresee those going away? Absolutely. Actually, they announced that um, those will be required through the end of this year, so through December 31st of uh, 2014, and they will no longer be required in 2015. So we've got official ruling on that. So keep doing it today, but you don't need to do it uh, after the end of the year. Wow, they're actually taking something away from. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> or making it easier, I should it's say. That makes sense. Yeah. You're right. Right. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. Um, okay. So as far as the the questions that we have at this point, they all pertain to ERISA wrap. We've addressed those, so we can move on with Tom's presentation. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, being on this call, and thanks. Special thanks to Beer and Purvis for letting us be a part of this. Um, love our partnership with them; they are great partners. Uh, so, I am going to talk about uh, services that uh, Sterling is now offering in relation to the ACA, and I'm going to just break my uh, presentation into three uh, sections. We'll talk a little bit about reform impact, a little bit about mandates, and then we'll get into the services specifically. Uh, employer size does matter, as we all know, for the ACA. And I like to think of there are three distinct uh, employer size segments that we need to be concerned with. Under 50 lives, 50 to 99, and then 100 lives and above. So if we've got that image uh, and our employers understand that, then the, the first step and moving forward with a lot of the stuff is trying is making sure they understand which of those three segments that they fall in, because what is required of them, um, what options they have is going to be largely dictated by those three segments. Um, obviously, I would imagine everybody now is aware that there was a one-way one-year delay for the employers in the 5099 segment, um, but this is an opportunity this year for them to uh, dig deeper into where they fall into these segments. Uh, one of the things that is, comes up fairly frequently with me is, is this common ownership. We have, seem to have 
a fair number of these types of situations in the Bay Area. Um, and the ACA now considers uh, common ownership that the employees are to be considered combined. Um, so if you have a one if, uh, company that has 20 employees and one that has 30, that puts you at 50 employees. And everybody should be concerned about these things, for-profits, non-profits, uh, government entities. One of the impacts on uh, what we think will especially be on the larger employers, but on a number of Bay Area employers, is our employers around this area have very rich, good plans. Um, and hanging out in the balance is that Cadillac tax, that, that very high excise tax that is coming up in 2018. Um, and I think the initial response that uh, oh, that's a long ways away um, we recently celebrated the four-year anniversary of the passage of the ACA. And I don't know about you guys, but that went awfully fast for me. So these next four years are going to go very quickly. And we believe we're going to see a demise of these Cadillac plans and some of the other special plans that we've seen, like executive medicals and, and retiree access. There's a financial impact. Um, there are fees. Um, that employers have to pay, that the health insurance has to pay. Um, Tom? Tom, are you there? I think we may have lost Tom. I think we may have, too. Um, Hello? Oh, there you are. There, am I there? Sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so we've got, uh, we'll talk about the financial impact. Um, all of this is going to lead to more compliance situations, more need to test, and of course, always the great word of auditing. So why are we here? Uh, over the last couple of years, Sterling has been solicited by both clients and brokers to help their employers, their clients, figure out where they fall in those three segments and figure out how they can be in compliance with this healthcare legislation. There, there's so much to it. And so Sterling has put together a suite of services that we can help employers and brokers so that they understand where they fall. One of the first ones is the full-time equivalent testing. Um, the ACA is defining a full-time employee as one le working at least 30 hours per week. Of course, we've got everybody understands we're talking about part-time employees can calculate into this full-time equivalent. Um, this is obviously an important number to find out initially. Now, we know that a number of employers, it's probably going to be pretty simple for them to figure out their full-time equivalents. However, there are many employers that have employees that work variable hours. Uh, it's possible that employees will work, have different work schedules from a week-to-week -week basis. And these might be the employers that you think of that might need help in this area. And it's obviously very critical, especially for those employers that are on the bubbles, those around 50 employees and those around 100 employees. So Sterling can help employers determine where they fall in this full-time equivalent status. At the same time, the small group and large group testing is a part of what we offer. Clearly, if you fall in the small group area, your options are much different than those in the 50 to 99 or, or above 50 lives in general. So determining whether you are a small or large group is going to be important, and Sterling can help with that. Tom, as well, we can help. Yes, I'm sorry. I've just I've had a couple of people um, send me a, a note that they're having a difficult time hearing you. You're kind of fading in and out. Okay, is this any? All right, let me. Uh, does this seem to sound any better? Y you are a little bit louder. Yes. Okay, let me try this. Um, so we're discussing the minimum value test. The minimum value test are 
you think of as the bronze level type of a plan, uh, employers, it will be important for them to know if their health plan does pass this test or where they fall in this value testing. So Sterling is able to, with some information that we receive from the employer, let an employer know if they are passing them this minimum value test. The affordability test is discussed a lot. Uh, of course, in relation to the employee-only level premiums not surpassing 9.5% of income. Um, this can be a challenge for some employers. And the ACA has offered three different methods to determine whether an employer passes this affordability test or not. Sterling's compliance team, Terry's team, will look at each individual employer and determine what, what works best for them, what would, what would best benefit this employer, and we will run the calculations and then provide our results to you and your employer. We discussed earlier the Cadillac tax that's looming. It's a 40% excise tax as we know it today. It's important to know, is, am I going to be, is my company going to be subject to this? But just as important is, what am I going to do in the next couple of years so that I can avoid that tax? There's an opportunity here if, for those that partner with Sterling. We cut our teeth on consumer-driven health plans. Uh, we have a lot of expertise in that area, and we anticipate that one of the ways that companies are going to avoid this Cadillac tax is to implement consumer-driven health plans. And so it's great to know, okay, I'm going to be subject to this tax, but I don't, don't do anything. The tougher part is, what am I going to do between now and 2018? What strategies can I use to avoid that? As you all know that have been involved with implementing an HSA or an HRA, at times, depending on the employee's demographics and, and what have you, it can be a challenge. And it takes time to educate. It takes time to uh, sell and, and help the employees understand, as well as the employers, what this change is. Sterling, you can count on us to help bridge that gap and build a strategy for you. Of course, what would be a law without some kind of non-discrimination testing? Um, this is not fully coming yet, but uh, we understand it is on the, uh, in the near future. Terry, could you elaborate on this one? Yes, so as you guys know, non-discrimination testing has existed for uh, flexible spending accounts, Section 125 plans, as well as self-insured medical plans. So PPACA has enacted that, hey, now we want to test fully insured health plans. But they realized as they started looking at that discrimination testing as it has been applied to other plans, that it may not work so well in the fully insured world. So the IRS is working on new additional guidance on how, what tests must be passed for this and how to conduct those tests. We do not know when they're going to come out with those regulations. They've, the DOL has assured that any time that they put out new regulations around this, that there will be ample time for employers to implement and understand what's being asked of them. So again, we're not sure what that testing is going to look like or how it's going to work, uh, but we're keeping our eyes out for when they do uh, issue that additional guidance. Thank you. Uh, the PCORI fee calculation, Sterling can help. Uh, as something that came out of the ACA was the Patient Centered Outcome Research Institute, which there's a lot of hope that this is going to lead to research that will measure clinical outcomes and in, in medical treatments um, that will benefit everybody. Uh, it has to be paid for, though. And the employers are going to help pay for this. Uh, this PCORI fee is there's a calculation as to uh, could be one or two dollars per employee. Sterling can help figure out what that is, what the fee is, and then Sterling also as part of our PCORI fee calculation service will complete the IRS Form 720, which has to be submitted by the employers. In regards to pricing, we've got a wonderful package that you're looking at here. 
we take four common tests that would give employers a great understanding of where they fall in these segments. Um, this package that we're looking at here would include the affordability testing, the group size test, the full-time equivalent test, and the minimum value test. So four tests, and you would, for employers under 500 lives, they would pay $225 with our agreement with Beer and Purvis. So really an affordable way for groups to get better understanding of, of where they fall. Then we sell these other services sort of all of cart. The Cadillac tax calculation, you can see, again, with the Beer and Purvis discount, falls at $225 for employers under 500 lives. The non-discrimination test that Terry just talked about, $135. The Corey fee calculation and submission of that IRS Form 720 is $180. And again, this will also appear on the broker picks uh, list. So we're very proud of that and very happy that Beer and Purposes agreed to add the FAPACA services as a service to you and your employers. That is it. We have questions on this uh, segment. Yeah, we do have a couple. Um, so, is there a specific date, like a point in time, that an employer, you know, should use or can use to determine, you know, their full-time equivalent employee status? Jerry, you want to handle that? Yeah. So the IRS recently came out and said that the employer can pick a six-month continuous period from the year before. So if, let's say you are a 200 life group and you know that in 2015 you're now going to be subject to these penalties under the ACA, you can choose any six-month period in 2014 and come up with your average number of full-time equivalents. And once you've determined that, that will apply for the entire year of 2015, and then you'll do the same thing for the next year. So you do get locked in. Your status as a applicable large employer will not change within a calendar year. OK, thank okay. you for answering you. that. So um, now, if a, if a group falls below 100 employees throughout the year, then they go over 100 employees. How is that measured, and who is really going to audit it? Yeah, so the way the auditing is going to work on this, there's new reports that every employer uh, above 50 lives is going to have to start using, and they are called the Form 6055 and Form 6056. This reports out, so I won't get into too much detail here, but and the forms have, itself have not been released by the IRS yet. We're expecting them later this year. Uh, employers will need to report all of their employees who has been off benefits. Uh, there's an abundance of information that's going to be required on this new reporting. This is how the IRS and the DOL will then track to find out if any of those employees have gone out to the insurance exchanges to buy coverage and potentially have received a subsidy. Those are the things that are going to trigger penalties then back to the employer, either because they were not offering uh, sufficient or affordable coverage. So again, if, you're, if your size changes within the year, you're locked in for the full calendar year. So again, you pick six months in 2014 and, and say, yep, I'm a, a large employer, or nope, I'm a small employer based on uh, the headcount, and then you're locked in for the entire 2015. Okay, thank you. Now, I do, so are you aware, I mean, as far as a, a tool for tracking or measuring full-time employee status, like for the pay-to-play rules? Uh, I think if you have employers that are using um, large payroll providers, I believe payroll providers are probably going to be a source for that ongoing monitoring and tracking, since again, you've got all the employees and the number of hours that they're working within those systems. Um, Sterling is not able to, on an ongoing basis, be able to track that, but we can do an initial look if, you're, if it 
if an employer is trying to figure out what the impact is going to be based on the population that they have today, um, we can do some modeling to say, okay, you're not providing insurance to these folks today, but if we were if everything was in place and we were in 2015 or 2016, here's who you would have to be providing coverage to. Here's how the time periods that you would be monitoring for. But again, unfortunately, we don't have the capacity to do this on an ongoing basis. So it's not like an employer can send us their their payroll reports on a semi-monthly or monthly basis and we'll track it. But it's very likely that payroll providers will be able to do this tracking. Okay. That makes sense. So on the, the self-reporting that you mentioned, like for the 6055 and 6056, will it be submitted with annual taxes or how, when, uh, when, what is the timing monthly. on that, on the, the compliance? Yeah, I believe it's a monthly filing of those reports that needs to be submitted. Wow, okay. Yeah, they, they released information uh, recently on what was going to be asked for, but again, the actual form and the format has not been released yet by the DOL or the instructions for that form. <laughs> so, yeah. That's not too surprising, okay. <laughs> now, um, I know that, so within the, the presentation, we looked at like the PCORI pricing. So we had a few questions come up in regard to that. So in regard to to the PCORI, isn't the the full aren't the fully insured the four fully insured employers the carriers are completing um, form seven twenty correct? That is correct. But any self insured health plans and that includes HRAs, those employers are on the hook for doing that reporting and paying that fee. Okay. All right. Let me just scan this real quick. I think all the last questions I had were should have been an addressed by that answer. Yes, they did. So I, I do not have any, any additional questions at this time. And I do want to uh, thank everyone for, for joining us today. But just before everyone starts to disconnect, I would like to thank Tom and Perry and Terry for for being with us today and for being such great partners. Now, I also want to let everyone know, excuse me, that the presentation in, has been recorded and we will post it on our website, but we'll also send you a link tomorrow in a follow-up email. We'll include information on broker picks and, you know, just remind everyone that we have, you know, added the PPACA compliance testing to our broker picks program. So any employer of yours that's enrolling 20 or more employees in what, with one of our medical carriers, you can elect to receive that for free for the first year. Um, if the group does not, um, in fact, you know, meet those requirements, there's still, you know, discounted pricing available through Beer and Purvis for that service, as well as, you know, the other Sterling HSA services that, that we've discussed and reviewed today. So, um, if we don't have any more questions, which it doesn't appear that we do, so I will. I, I did have. Yeah, I did go have ahead. One thing I wanted to say, uh, Stacy. In addition to thanking you for uh, letting us do this today and be of value to your brokers, I wanted to um, invite Terry today and thank her for joining us. But I wanted all of the brokers to understand that we have. Uh, depth on our compliance team to answer all the really tough questions um, so that you know that we're ready to serve you. So thank you again, everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll call it a wrap, and we'll look forward to talking to everyone soon. Take care. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.